now we present Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X, the Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. By Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Here's a word from RCA Victor. Inch for inch, your best buy in television is RCA Victor 19-inch. And your best buy in 19-inch television is RCA Victor's superb new Hillsdale. Remember the name, RCA Victor's superb new Hillsdale. And there's more to the Hillsdale's huge 19-inch screen than size itself. Bright pictures, clear pictures, the steadiest pictures you've ever seen. Make this RCA Victor's finest console television set. Extra powerful circuits and new picture pickup on the Hillsdale ensure best possible reception. And of course, all RCA Victor television is million proof, quality proven in over two million homes. Yes, the RCA Victor Hillsdale is impressive, it's luxurious. 19 inch console, television that's unequaled for value and performance. It's superlative entertainment, a superlative instrument. Insist on RCA Victor and remember the name the Hillsdale. Be sure to see it and hear it. And buy the magnificent Hillsdale at your RCA Victor dealers. Vienna is a city where the past can never be forgotten, for it constantly intrudes on the present. A lilting melody can turn the muddy Danube to a shimmering blue again, and the proud-faced statues outside the Schönbrunn Palace will briefly restore the Habsburgs to their toppled thrones. But the present can never be completely erased. It is always real and always terrifying. A man sits at the desk in his study, the papers in front of him unread, his fingers tapping rhythmically against the polished inlay, his white face mirrored in the glistening wood. Yeah, yeah, come in, come in. I had hoped you would come. Oh, I am sorry. I was expecting someone else. Uh, what can I do? <laughs> <laughs> Reports from the commissioner's office in Vienna, Ken. I've been through them, Chief. Just words. Wilhelm Mitter is dead, and all we get is words. I know, I know. But what can you expect in a place like that? A city divided into four sectors and an international zone. Well, it's practically impossible to run down his killer. And even if you did... Mm. Don't forget the Russians have been trying to close down Mitter's newspaper for the last five years. And, Chief, Die Freiheit was the last great free newspaper in Eastern Europe. Yeah, I know. You've heard about the fight for its ownership. Well, I did read something that... There's just two children fighting each other over the inheritance. It can drag on for months, years. And there won't be an issue published until it's settled. But, Ken, it's uh, not the first time a brother and a sister got into a squabble over a will. They weren't just a brother and a sister, Chief. They were closer to each other than, than any two kids I've ever seen. Oh, people do change. Not that much. I'd stake my life on it. Here. Yeah. Take a look at this cable. Hmm? When will you visit Vienna again? Sign Maria. Yeah. It was sent within a few hours of her father's murder. Chief, I'd like to go to Vienna. Sure, Ken. But it's hardly a matter for the Bureau. After all, we Wilhelm don't... Mitter was my friend. All right. All right. I know how you feel. Go ahead. Thanks. Oh, wait a minute. What about Zellschmidt? Taking him with you? Not this time. <laughs> Are you sure? All right. 
Suppose you were to tell Miss Brooks that I'm leaving for, um, Hong Kong. What? Two to one, you'll get reservations on the next plane for China. So long, Chief. Fasten your seatbelts, please. We will depart from Idlewild Airport in about two minutes. Our first stop will be Shannon, Ireland. From there, you... Oh, no. Phew. Just in the nick of time. Another minute and I'd be rolled away with those steps out. Uh, your name, please. Pagon Zellschmidt. Zellschmidt, I don't believe don't I Don't have... bother about finding me a seat. There's plenty of room here with my friend. <laughs> well, Pagon. <laughs> Glad to see me, huh? But listen, <laughs> do you know what this character in the airport told me? He said this, this plane for Hong Kong didn't leave for another hour yet. If I hadn't seen you getting aboard one. This isn't the plane for Hong Kong. You, you mean... Wait a minute. Don't take off. Let me out of Sit here. Sit down, Pagan. But, but if I'm going to Hong Kong with you, I've, I've got to... Oh, I get it. They put us both on the wrong plane. <laughs> what a lousy way to run an oh, airport. Oh, forget it. Stuart. But, but... Look. Yes, sir? My uh, friend here, I got a ticket for Hong Kong by mistake. Think you can exchange it for passage to Vienna? Vienna? I believe so. Fortunately, we're not overweight on this flight. He can remain aboard. Will there be anything else, Mr. Thurston? Sure, you're perfectly comfortable? An extra pillow, perhaps? If there's anything at all... No, that's, that's all, thanks. Uh, yes, Mr. Thurston. Oh, that's funny. What's the matter, Mr. X? wonder why he called me Thurston. Are you... Uh, huh? Yeah. I was careful not to use my own name when I made this reservation. I'd like to see Maria Mitter. I am sorry. Fräulein Mitter is not receiving visitors. I'd be glad to tell her you called here. Uh... Thurston, Ken Thurston. Uh, is uh, Maria expecting you? Well, perhaps you'd better ask her that. Oh, of course. Forgive me. Uh, you come inside. Thanks. I am Hugo Oblenz. Herr Oblenz? Uh, I'm a friend of Maria's, a close friend. If you will follow me down the hall to her room. Thanks. Harold Brents, perhaps you could tell me the circumstances of Wilhelm Mitter's death. Unfortunately, there is not much to tell. It was three days ago on Herr Mitter's birthday. Yes, I know. We had dinner, the four of us, Herr Mitter, Maria, her brother, Rudolf, and myself. We were all to go to the opera later, but Herr Mitter said some business had come up. He insisted we go without him. I see. When we returned, we found him at his desk, dead. His study had been ransacked. Anything in particular missing? No. Uh, this is Maria's room. Yeah? Maria, this is Herr Thurston. Hello, Maria. I can't tell you how sorry I am. I understand, thank you. Was there anything else, Mr. Thurston? Hmm? I know you must be in Vienna on business. It was kind of you to drop by, but I do not wish to keep you from your work. I'm, I'm in no hurry. I thought we might have a little talk. Oh? What about? Well, I, I got a cablegram yesterday, Maria, and thought it might be from you. So what reason would I have to cable you? Well, maybe it was from Rudolf. It then. could not have been from Rudolf. He would have no reason either. Where is he, by the way? He no longer lives here. I... I believe he's staying at the Imperial Hotel in the Russian sector. He is? I'm afraid Rudolf is very friendly with the Russians. That's why Maria is fighting him for control of the newspaper. I see. I... Oh, I may not see you again before I leave Vienna, Maria, so maybe I'd better say goodbye now. Yeah. Goodbye, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> Uh, 
there's our man, Pagan, over in the corner of the bar. Uh-huh. But who's that fancy-dressed character with him? He looks like he's going to masquerade. How can he stand up with all those medals? Yep. A Russian major in full-dress uniform. What's he doing here? Well, this hotel is in their sector. They've taken it over. You mean... You mean we're in the, in the Russian zone? That's right. Wait for me. I'll be right back. But... But, Mr. Thurston... Oh, Rudolph? I do not believe I have had the... Thurston? What are you doing here? Don't you know? No, I do not. Well, uh, mind if I join you for a drink, then? Major Barkoff and I were just leaving. You will excuse us. Do not be so impatient, Rudolph. There is no hurry. I am pleased to make your acquaintance, Mr. Thurston. I assume you are an old friend of Rudolph's. He knew my father, that was all. Wilhelm Mitchell was one of the finest men I ever knew. My father was a fool. He lived in the past. He had not sense enough to see the world is changing, that we must change with it. Important things don't change, Rudolph. Do not argue with me, Thurston. You want to have a drink with us? Here's a drink. In your face. <laughs> Rudolph, listen to me. Listen to you, yes, yes. That's all you Americans want, someone to listen. I insult you, I throw a drink in your face, and you want to talk. At least the Russians are different. So I've heard. You want conversation, do you? All right, let me give you some. Get out of Vienna first. There are too many Americans here already. Goodbye. <laughs> they say it is we Russians who are crude and unpleasant. You see, Mr. Thurston, how untrue it is. Mm. And yet, we are here to carry out the wishes of the Austrian people, whatever they may be. So it might be wise to do as Rudolph suggested, no? Does that come under the heading of a warning, Major, or a threat? Merely a suggestion, Mr. Thurston. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, Mr. Thurston. Yeah? You remember me, the steward from the plane? Yeah, yeah, I remember you. Oh, fine, fine, I thought you would. Oh, oh, there's a telephone call for you. I happen to see you in the bar. And Thanks. I, uh, you can take it in that booth. No, uh, it's fortunate I recognized you. The desk clerk had no record that you're staying here. As a matter of fact, I'm not. Oh, it's too bad. I always stop at the Imperial between flights. The accommodations are excellent. Wonderful cuisine, marvelous service, and some of the finest people... Yeah, in... sure, sure. This booth? Uh, yes. Uh, tell me, will you be returning to America soon? Uh, excuse me. Hello. Mr. Thurston, this is Maria. Yes, Maria, what is it? I lied to you before. I did send that cable. I need your help badly. You must try to... No. No! Maria! Maria! We will continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. You see it in the newspapers. No unpleasant aftertaste. You hear it on the radio. No unpleasant aftertaste. You see it on television. No unpleasant aftertaste when you smoke Chesterfield. It's the biggest plus in cigarette history. Science discovered it. You can prove it. Science discovered that of all brands tested, Chesterfield, and only Chesterfield, leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. Prove it yourself. Smoke a pack of Chesterfields. They're always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. And Chesterfield is the cigarette that leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That's the biggest plus in cigarette history. No unpleasant aftertaste. Science discovered it. Prove it yourself. Buy Chesterfield today. <laughs> Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall with Leon Velasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. In the divided city of Vienna, the murder of Wilhelm Mitter becomes a link in the chain strangling the great Austrian newspaper, Die Freiheit. And with the death of Mitter's daughter, Maria, a second link is forged. The Man Called X stares grimly at the body of the murdered girl, then slowly turns and walks out of the room. I am to blame. No one else. I am responsible Easy for it. Easy there, Hugo. You don't understand, Mr. Thurston. I told her to call you. I made her do it. I knew she was lying to you before. I could tell. Someone had frightened her. Who was it, Oblance? She wouldn't tell. Go on. 
She was standing here at the telephone. She saw something through that window. She started to scream. There was a shot, and... You get a look at whoever did it? No, not really. I think it was a man I ran to Maria, carried her into the bedroom. When I got back here, there was no one. You sent for the police? Yeah, yeah, at once. Uh, this your top coat, Hugo? Coat? Yeah, on the rack here. Why? No. Must have belonged to Hermita. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. Rudolf and Maria gave their father a coat for his birthday present. Let's see. Oh, sorry. But it's difficult to get anything well made in Vienna now. Yeah. Maria! Maria, I heard something happen. Ma Maria, where are you? Out of my way. You don't wait. I said out of my way. <laughs> oh, no. No! I won't cry for her, Mr. Thurston. I'm afraid it would not be very convincing. And after what happened this afternoon at the Imperial Hotel... I know. Who are you trying to convince, Rudolph? Major Barkov? You mean he wasn't serious when he got so mad at you, Mr. Thurston? How about it, Rudolph? I thought I was doing the right thing. I was fighting for control of the paper to save Maria's life. I love her very much, Mr. Thurston. I know you do. I was sure that if she tried to publish the Freiheit, the communists would kill her like they killed my father. Is that why you were playing up to the communists? Yes, of course. Anything to save the life of my sister. The police are in the other room talking to Hugo. Before they come in here, there's something I want to ask you. Rudolph, the night your father was shot, you were all going for the opera. But something made him change his mind at the last minute. What was it? He said he had to work. It seemed strange at the time because... Fledermaus was one of his favorite operas. Yes, I remember. While we were having dinner, someone came to the door and asked to see him. A little gray-haired man who said his name was Bach. Bach. Like the composer. Yeah, yeah, that's how I happened to remember it. I took his coat and asked him to wait the hall. When I went back in the dining room and told my father who it was, he insisted Herr Bach be brought in at once. What then? When Herr Bach came in, he suddenly seemed very confused. Uh -huh. Said he had made a mistake. He had come to the wrong house. Dashed out of the room and left before I could even show him to the door. Yeah. Rudolph, Hugo says you gave your father a new coat for his birthday. What kind was it? A fine camel's hair with a delicate plaid design. It was an import from England. I see. One more thing. This Herr Bach, he was a small man with gray hair, you say. Anything else you can tell me about him? Yes, yes. He had a scar on his upper lip. Huh? He had tried to grow a mustache to cover it, but the scar showed through. All right, Pagan. A short, gray-haired man with a scar on his upper lip. A few days ago, he was wearing a camel's hair coat. Find him. <laughs> but, Mr. Thurston, that's impossible. Well, we've got to find him, and I guess the best thing to do is hire somebody in each of the different sectors. Hire? Waste all that money? When I have cousins in all four sectors and Uncle Fritzfeld in the international zone. Okay, then what are you waiting for? But, Mr. Thurston, <laughs> we haven't settled on a prize. $100 if we find him by midnight. $10 off for every hour after that. <laughs> what am I waiting for? Well, that finishes my report. I am sorry to have had to keep you after the other authorities questioned you so long, but my government is very much interested in this case. I suggest you report to my office in the morning. Aero Blentz. But I've already told you everything, Major Barco. Major, isn't this a matter for the city police rather than the occupation authorities? Of course, Mr. Thurston, it was only a suggestion. Oh, sure. So, there is no point in my staying longer. And Rudolph, I'm sure the authorities in my sector will be glad to know that ownership of the Freiheit is now clearly settled. Any assistance we may be able Just to give... Just a moment, Major. I am publishing the newspaper myself. Ah. Without any influence from you or anyone else. What's this? Once more, the Freiheit will print the truth, as it did before my father was killed. See here. Come in. Hello, Pagan. Mr. Thurston, can I speak to you for a minute confidentially? Sure. Well? Well, you owe me a hundred bucks. Good. 
That means you found the man who called on Herr Mittler just before he was killed. But that... Hey, sh- All right, Pagan, let's go. Oh, Rudolph. Yes, Mr. Get on down to your paper. Give me an hour or so, and I'll have a bang-up story for you. A story, sir? Yes. You'll have to do the follow-up on it, though. Remember? Remember how Fred Walker handled the Anderson case? Walker? Yes, the American reporter, you remember. Uh, well, yes. Yes, of course, yes. I, I will follow it up. Good. Come on, big one. Uh, he's a little room at, at the top of that stairs, Mr. X. He's, uh, he's been hiding there for nearly a week. Don't even come out for food or nothing. No. But listen... Why did you tell everybody back there all about it? I wanted to be sure the murderer would follow us. The murderer? I think I'll, I'll wait downstairs. Alone? Well, probably all right if you insist. Uh, Mr. X. Yeah? Who was that Fred Walker and what was the Anderson case? I haven't the faintest idea. Yeah. Huh? Go back. Huh? Get out of here or I will shoot. Hell back. We're your friends. We're here to help you. I'm lying. Go away. Don't you know me? Ken Thurston? Yes. No, it is a trick. He's an American. Listen, I'm walking out under the light. I don't have a gun. You can see for yourself. Well? Mr. Thurston, I... I did not know. I, I couldn't believe. You must save me. I know I failed you once. I, I failed everyone. Myself, my country. But, but now I have changed. Yeah, I thought it would turn out to be you. Is this your room? Yeah, please. Get inside. Why didn't you go to the Americans when you got to Vienna? I was afraid they would hate me. Send me back to Czechoslovakia or to the Russians. You ought to know us better than that, Herr Flyditz. Flyditz? But I thought this character's name was Bach. He worked with Wilhelm Mitter in the underground during the war. They all took the names of composers. Yeah, yeah. You know what happened after the war. I... I joined the party. I was secretary of the interior. Then... Then you found out you were still a Czech and the comet didn't like it. They announced you were killed on a flight to Moscow. But you escaped to Vienna. You went to Mitter for help. He had been my friend once. I... I thought he would understand. And he would have. But at Mitter's house, you saw someone who frightened you. It couldn't have been Mitter or his children. You expected them. So it had to be Oblenz. Yeah, that's right. He had worked for the party in Czechoslovakia... They sent him to Vienna to get information about Mitter. You knew he'd recognized you, so you ran away. You were in such a rush, you took Mitter's coat by mistake and left your own. Yeah. Now you will help me get to get to England, to France. I, I do not expect America, but anywhere away from it. Good evening, Mr. Thurston. Who go? Leave the gun on the table, splide it. Uh, better do what he says. Thurston, I must thank you and your friend for finding here Flydex. We've been searching the city for days. Your men can't be very efficient, Hugo. In the long run, we are efficient, Mr. X. We have to be. It would not look well for a dead communist hero to be found in Vienna, alive, and a traitor. You can't keep it from coming out someday. We have managed so far. Herr Mitter was not permitted to publish the story. Major Barkov took care of that. And you took care of Maria? Of course. She had become suspicious. So, when I found her telephoning to you... (laughs) So, now you will all accompany me to the Russian zone. Now! Oh, now, wait a minute. Mr. Rex. Stand back! You seem to forget that you are unarmed and I have this gun. What you seem to forget is that this building is surrounded by an American patrol. American patrol? What are you talking about? That message I gave Rudolph about Fred Walker and the Anderson story was a tip-off. Walker was a reporter who always called in the cops when he tracked down a scoop. But, Mr. X, you said that was just Look a... Look double... out for yourself, Oblenz. It's pretty dark, but you can see men down there. Hey, you're right. There are some soldiers, but, but they don't... Well, Hugo, to... maybe you better come along with us. No. No. You think I will allow myself to be tried by the American military police? You're wrong. I still have a chance. Fly it. Give me your coat. Wait a minute. Do as I say and do not move any of you. Here it is. Here. Listen to me, Hugo. There is a fire escape outside this window. It's very dark, but your soldiers will recognize the coat. I'm sure you have told them about hair. Fly it. That's the point I haven't. I will take the chance. 
They will not shoot me. Wait, you fool. Wait! Stay you are and make no sound. Yo! Below there! My name is Friday! Carl Augustus Friday! I tried to tell you, Mr. Rex, the soldiers, they're Russians. I could even see that Major Barkov and all his medals. And they thought he was I? Yeah. I had hoped I could stall him and tell the Americans where to dig it here. This is our zone. Patrol every. Here they come, Mr. Rex. Why? Look at those Russians scattered. Yes, well. I guess we can leave now. Help it, sir. Believe me. If there's anything I can do to show my gratitude. Sure there is. Give your story to Rudolf Mitter. I'd like to see it in the next issue of Deep Fly Hype. I will be glad to. I I think you have made Rudolph's task very easy for him, Mr. Thurston. No, I wouldn't say that, Herr Flight. It's, it's never very easy, here or anywhere else, to print the truth. But without a free press, there's no real freedom at all. You know, Pagan, that's a pretty good name. Die Freiheit. Freedom. Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall, will return in just a moment. If you would like to know a quick, easy way to ease the pain of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, then by all means try Anison. Your own dentist or physician may, at one time or another, have handed you an envelope containing Anison tablets. Then you already know how incredibly fast and effectively Anison brings relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. For your own sake, try Anison. Anison is sold to you on this guarantee. If the first few tablets do not give you all the relief you want as fast as you want it, you may return the unused portion and your money will be refunded. You can get Anison tablets at any drug counter. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. Now, here again is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Joan Banks, Will Wright, Stan Waxman, Paul Fries, Tony Barrett, Frank Gerstle, and Bob Bruce. Next week, Ken tangles with a couple of information passers behind the Iron Curtain, where death and treasury march hand in hand. And Pagan, oh, he'll be along too. Played as usual by Leon Belasco. So join us, won't you, when next I return, as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is the Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. The Man Called X is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. Tonight's story was written by Frank Burt. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to hear The Magnificent Montague with Monty Woolley, formerly heard on Friday, now brought to you as a Saturday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. William Bendix stars in The Life of Riley. Enjoy it on NBC. NBC.